Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video we're going to be talking about reading from files. So it's kind of a follow up from the previous video where we talked about writing from files. So if you want to get the basics, check that video out because a lot of it's going to be very similar. But first, check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now when you're reading from files, it's going to work very similar to using CN as we have used throughout this entire series. The difference here is that CN is an object that has already been created for us. When we're reading from files, we have to create our own object. So how are we going to do that? First thing, make sure you include fstream. That is a requirement to do these things. And basically, I'm going to go through an example of reading from this tacos.txt file and getting these lines here. We'll just start with names and then we'll work on some other stuff here. So Caleb, Amy, and Susan. And I'm just going to clear out main and start from scratch just to get a little bit more practice. All right, so when you want to read from a file, you need to make an input file stream object. To do that, you say standard if stream and give it a name. We'll just call it file. And then inside of parentheses, you can put the file name such as tacos.txt. Now one thing you need to know is that when you're writing to files, if this file doesn't exist, it'll be created. But when you're reading from files, it will not be created if it doesn't exist. It'll actually not open successfully. Which makes sense because why would you create a file to read because there wouldn't be anything in there yet. So now that we've opened this file, we can use a loop and basically take these names and store them in a vector. So to do that, we're going to use a while loop. Now inside of the while condition, you're going to use your file as if it's cn. So you're just going to say file and use the two arrows and put it inside of a variable. So let's create that variable. We'll just call it input like that. Now we're going to store this in input. So this expression here will evaluate as true if the read was successful. When you use this operator, it's actually going to return the stream. So it's going to return file and file will evaluate to true if the previous read was successful. So in other words, we can use this loop to basically read through the file until there's nothing left. So that is how you do that. Awesome, so we're also going to create a vector to store all of the names. So up here, we'll just create a vector and let's give it the type of string and we'll call it names. Now inside of the while loop is where we're going to add the names to the vector. So we're just going to say names.push back and what are we going to push into this array? We're going to push the input. So the input is where the names are being stored temporarily. Cool, so I think that's all, but let's just compile, make sure the code has no errors in the code. Okay, and now what I wanna do is I wanna output these names to make sure we got them in there correctly. So we'll just use a range-based for loop to get a little bit more practice with that, and that's going to look like this. We're going to say for, and these are of type string, and we'll call it name, and this is coming from the names variable. Then all we have to do is say C out, name, and then we can do an end line. Compile and run, and voila, you get the names. So that is how you read names from a file and put those into a vector. Now when you're using this technique to read data from a file, it's going to interpret the input based on the destination. So in this situation, we're storing this inside of a string, so it's expecting a string and it's going to stop at any invalid characters, specifically white space. So this will get one word. So that means if I go in here and say Caleb is awesome, it's not going to work quite the way we expect. When we run this, you can see that each word is considered a new name. Caleb is awesome, Amy, Susan. <laughs> Understanding the way this works is important because if we change the destination type, it's going to change how it interprets the file. So for example, let's change this to type char. And we have to change this in a couple places. So we'll change the vector and then we'll change the for loop. So instead of using a string, we'll use a char. Now let's compile. And when we run, you can see that each letter is now considered a name rather than each word. Same thing with numbers. It will interpret any number until it hits a character or a space. So make sure you understand what destination you are using, what type it is, in order to understand how this is going to act. 
All right, so that is one way of doing input. There is another way you'll probably see, which is get line, and actually there's another one, get. So let's go through an example with that. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to clear out our code here and get rid of this vector. Get will look like this. You have file.get, and this is going to return a character, so we can store that in a char variable. We'll just call it temp, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we'll just output that when we compile and run, you can see we just get the very first character. The other common way is with get line, which is not actually a, a method, it's a function by itself. So you just call get line, and then you actually pass in the stream. So we're going to say file, and then you have to pass in the variable to store the line in. So to do that, we can just create a new variable of type string, like so, and we'll just put that in as an argument. Now, when we output, we're going to want to output the correct variable line. Now let's compile and run. You can see it grabs that first line. Caleb is awesome. Now the question is, if that was a Boolean, would it be true or false? I think that's all I have to say about reading from files. The only other thing is that in the previous video, when we were talking about writing to files and how you can check to see if it successfully opened a file, what we did is we locked that file to basically simulate it was being used or that we couldn't get access to it. The same thing can happen to reading from files if the file does not exist. So for example, if we call this tacos.txt, and if we have an if statement file.is open, this will evaluate to false because tacos.txt does not exist. So when I compile and run, you can see absolutely nothing is displayed, which makes sense.